Welcome to Listen to 360. In this video, we're going to further explore the panning possibilities of a mono Dolby Atmos object. In the previous video, the panning followed the boundaries of the room. In this video, we'll do some more exotic panning, starting from now. Let's first move up in the middle of the room, going to the front height center. You see the yellow dot in the top front center corner. Now there might be some confusion of where you can hear this on your Dolby Atmos system, but if you have front left and right height speakers against the wall, then you'll hear my voice in the phantom center between those two speakers. On the other hand, if you have a 7.1.4 system with four ceiling speakers, then you'll hear my voice between the top front left and top front right speaker in the phantom center between those two speakers. This is not to say that heights are better than tops or vice versa, it merely gives you an impression of how the Dolby Atmos panning will play back on your system. A mix will always be more complex than this naked mono voice that you're listening now in this Dolby Atmos demo. When a film has a car chase in a city with a flying helicopter overhead, sounds will come from all sides. That helicopter might start in the right front somewhere and then go to the height layer to pass by over your head and then maybe go to the left back. If your height layer consists of four speakers and there were height speakers mounted against the front wall and back wall, or four speakers top front left right and top rear left right, the flyover will probably work on both setups. Speaker positions are often depending on room size, shape, where there are doors, and of course the WAF, the wife acceptancy factor. I'll start moving now and do some diagonal trajectories. The 3D image that you see on the screen is a representation of the panning position of the Dolby Atmos object. It's not a representation of your speaker positions. You could consider it as a lower layer and a higher layer where the sound can be panned to. So if I position my voice in the height layer in the top rear right corner and you have a ceiling speaker top rear right that is 2 meters from the back wall, then that will be the position where you hear my voice. Now if I position my voice in the top rear right speaker on the 3D drawing, where the physical speaker would be, then you would start hearing some bleed of my voice out of the top rear left speaker and the top front speakers. Now let's move further to the center of the room in the ceiling. You will hear my voice coming out of the four speakers at the same time. Now let's move down. When I am at 50%, the side speakers start playing together with the ceiling speakers. I'll start moving now to the back and you will see on the diagram which speakers will be playing. Moving back to the front, center, in the middle of the room between the lower and the height layer, you will see that the center will start playing with the top speakers. Let's go down to the center speaker only. When I start using diversions, meaning that I can bleed the signal to left and right, till I get to the extreme left and right and have a phantom center, you will notice that if you sit in the middle of your left and right speaker, that my voice still seems to appear to come out of the center. This is the way you hear things in the middle when you're listening to a normal stereo music recording. However, if you move out of the center, you will hear my voice coming out of the speaker that is closest to you. So if you're sitting on the left hand side, my voice seems to be coming out of the left speaker. In a film theater, it would be very strange to mix dialogue that way. Most of the time you would like to anchor the dialogue to the screen. And that works much better when you have a center speaker behind the screen. In the meantime, I'm back at the left front corner. Let's make this object bigger. And bigger. And bigger. And still bigger. Biggest. My voice is now coming from all speakers at the same time. This is often called dead space or fat mono. Because having the same signal in all your speakers in the mix is not that interesting. If you do want to go for this ominous sounding voice, a little bit of reverb goes a long way. Let's make the object smaller again and move it around in the room. You will notice that it's bigger in the sense that there are clusters of speakers playing together when I move around. Let's park my voice in the back of the room and listen to something more exciting. This is a space stereo recording of a Porsche 993 that I made in 2005. Stereo? I know that I promised only to talk about mono objects, 
but two channel recordings are pretty interesting, no? Let's take one of those two channels and pan it around the room. Here I'm back in the front. For those listening in binaural, did you hear the car going around? Here's another one, the interior of the same car on the Spa-Francorchamps circuit. Wait a minute, in a Porsche 993, the engine is in the back. what happens when you lift your foot off the throttle in the double left-hander. Lucky for me, the circuit was already redesigned and there was plenty of runout space in turn 12. If you'd like to see where this corner is located, I'll put a link in the description to a 360 video with spatial audio on our Listen to 360 channel. Please stay tuned for more videos on Dolby Atmos in the near future. I reserve the right to be totally wrong and thank you for listening. This video was brought to you by Listen to 360. More info on our YouTube channel.